if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. What we can do to start the problem is draw the RC circuit that's being described in this question. And of course, in an RC circuit, we have the resistance as well as a capacitor. And in this problem, the capacitor is discharging. So what we're going to do is take a look at the equation for a discharging capacitor. So in this equation, we have the charge at a particular time, and that's symbolized by the lowercase q, equaling the initial amount of charge on the capacitor, which was stated as 5.10 microcoulombs, times E raised to this term right here, where T is time, R is resistance, and C is capacitance. We actually have all the values on the right-hand side of this equation, right? We have the initial charge on the capacitor, the time was stated as nine microseconds, the resistance is given in kiloohms, and then the capacitance is given in nanofarads. We just have to be careful about converting into standard units. So let's take a look at what that would be. So for the initial amount of charge, it was given in terms of microcoulombs. So we just have to make sure we multiply it by 10 to the minus 6 to get it into the standard unit. Similarly, the time was given in microseconds. So we have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 6 to get it into the standard unit of seconds. The kiloohms resistance needs to be multiplied by 10 to the third. And then the nanofarads capacitance needs to be multiplied by 10 to the minus 9. So with all of those values in their standard form, we can compute the charge on the capacitor after 9 microseconds. And we get approximately 1.60 times 10 to the minus 7th. And since we used all standard units, this would come out into coulombs. So that's good, but we're not yet ready to solve part A. And what we're going to do next is actually calculate the potential difference across the capacitor. And we're going to see why in a moment that's important. And that's simply going to be the amount of charge present on the capacitor at this time divided by its capacitance. So we'll plug in the charge and then also the capacitance, again, in its standard unit of farads. And when we do that, we get approximately 80.1 volts. Now, that's going to be the potential difference across this capacitor. What we're going to do is apply Kirchhoff's loop rule and figure out the potential difference across the resistor. Now, we recall in the loop rule, that we begin at an arbitrary starting point, perhaps right here, and then we're gonna move in a loop fashion around the circuit until we return to where we started. And while we do that, we keep track of the potential changes. So for example, as we move across the capacitor, we're going to have the potential change across the capacitor, and then we continue around the loop and encounter this resistance. Now you'll notice that we're moving with the direction of the current as indicated by this arrow. When you're moving with the direction of current, that represents a negative potential change. Furthermore, the potential change through a resistor is the current multiplied by the value of the resistance. We continue our way around the loop and return to where we had started, and once we reach that point, we could set the potential changes equal to zero. Now, we can see from this equation that we're going to be able to solve for the current I. And so to do that, let's add IR over to the right side, and then divide both sides by the resistance R. And now that we've isolated the current I, we can plug in the potential difference across the capacitor that we just found, as well as the resistance that was stated earlier. Remember to convert that into ohms by multiplying by 10 to the third. And when you perform the calculation, you should get approximately 0 0.062 amps for the current. And then if you need to convert that into milliamps, you can just move that decimal over three places to the right. So in fact, we would get 62 milliamps as the correct answer to part A. Now for part B, we just return to the discharging of a capacitor equation and we simply have to plug in a new time value of eight microseconds. Again, we'll convert that to seconds by multiplying by 10 to the minus six. Otherwise, the initial charge on the capacitor is the same. The resistance and capacitance are also the same, so we'll just plug in. And when you plug all those values in their standard form into the equation, you should get approximately 2.35 times 10 to the minus seven coulombs. And then if you need to knock that back into microcoulombs, we can say that one coulomb is 10 to the positive 6 microcoulombs. So that would give us a value of 0.235 microcoulombs. So that would be the correct answer to part B. Now for part C, it turns out that the maximum current in the resistor is going to occur the moment the capacitor begins to discharge. In other words, when time is equal to zero, that's going to serve as the time at which we get the maximum current. And we can see from the discharging of a capacitor equation that if we substitute zero in for time, that's actually going to cause E to the zero 
to equal one. So in other words, the charge on the capacitor at this time is equal to the initial charge on the capacitor, which was the 5.1 microcoulombs. That means that the potential change across the capacitor is going to be that charge value divided by the capacitance, which gives us approximately 2550 volts. And then we apply Kirchhoff's loop rule again which we recall led to this equation. And then when we solve that for the current, we would get the following expression. So we just have to take this voltage and then divide by the resistance stated in the question. That's going to give us the maximum current. And when you do so, you should get approximately 1.96 amps. And that's going to be the maximum current that's present in this discharging circuit. Thanks for taking the time to watch. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.